Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSER accredited exercise physiologist. In this episode we're going to be talking about what to do when cording and lymphedema present together. Now it's not super common that they do occur together, but when they occur at the same time it's almost as if they feed off each other. When I look at people who have cording and lymphedema going on at the same time, you get this situation where the cording can be particularly sensitive, quite sore, quite tight, and the lymphedema that goes with that cording seems to be relatively mild to moderate. So it's not often that I see people who have really, really significant lymphedema and then also have cording, but it's often that the cording that presents by itself is relatively straightforward to sort out. Yes, the patient might be a little bit restricted in their range of motion, but it certainly doesn't appear to be anywhere near as sensitive as when people have lymphedema and cording together. I suspect the cording might be quite sensitive when lymphedema is about because at the end of the day, cording from everything I can see clinically is just neural tension. And if there's excess fluid sitting around nerves, it's possibly putting even more mechanical pressure on that nerve. Apart from the nerve just being tight, it's now got extra fluid to contend with sitting around the nerve. So there's mechanical pressure on that nerve as well as the nerve being tight. So this might be why the cording that happens when lymphedema is also present is particularly sensitive. It doesn't happen with everybody, but it's just a clinical observation that I've made over the years. The lymphedema that presents when cording is also present is often mild to moderate. However, I do think that because people's range of motion in their arm is restricted because of cording, this may also be impacting lymphatic flow. So if you've got early onset lymphedema and you've also got cording, it's a little bit tricky to get past both of them because there is restriction in range of motion because of the cording, which then impacts lymphatic flow. And when lymphatic flow is impacted, then that means lymphedema can build up a little bit more. The other thing, of course, is that if the cording is really sensitive and quite uncomfortable, then your propensity to want to move your arm is probably also going to be impacted. So there's restricted range of motion, there's pain, and then there's excess fluid, which is also impacting the cording. So it's a little bit of a vicious cycle. But let's talk about how we can treat both of these things at once. So let me just point out first that we have to diagnose each issue separately. And ideally, you want to be going to someone who is trained in breast cancer, who's a lymphedema therapist. And this could be a physiotherapist, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, or a nurse. But just make sure that you're seeing the right person to get a thorough diagnosis. When I'm diagnosing cording, I'm typically using neural tension testing. So that is to put the nerve that runs from your, from your armpit down towards your fingertips on stretch. And there's a specific way that a physiotherapist or an occupational therapist is going to be able to tell if you've got cording. Of course, there's often visible signs of cording. So if someone lifts their arm up and they've got a visible cord under their arm, that is also a test to see if someone has cording. But of course, there's always the clinical presentation or the reporting of the patient that needs to be taken into account with any diagnosis. So that's how we diagnose cording. When it comes to diagnosing lymphedema, of course, I'm also taking into account the patient's history and their clinical presentation. I'm feeling their limb, I'm looking at their limb, but I'm also using an LDEX device. So this is a lymphedema index device, which is going to give me a very clear indication most of the time, particularly if it matches up with their clinical presentation and history as to whether they've got lymphedema or not. So that's how lymphedema is typically diagnosed. If you don't have access to an LDEX device, then of course a measuring tape is your fallback position, but you just have to make sure you're taking clinical presentation into account if you're using a tape measure. So make sure you get each condition diagnosed as a separate entity, and then we can start moving on to treating them together at the same time and hopefully get them better together. So if anyone watching has been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I've done quite a few videos on lymphedema and on cording. So I'll just leave a link here to the videos I've previously done on how to treat cording 
and then I'll leave another link in a little while to the videos I've done on lymphedema. So if you're going to be treating your cording then I recommend you get into neural stretches which are described in other videos that I've done before. This is essentially putting the nerve on tension and making sure that you're putting a stretch on the entire length of the nerve. So essentially when we're looking to get cording and lymphedema that are occurring at the same time better, we can treat them at the same time, but we're treating them essentially separately, or we're certainly we're treating them separately most of the time. There's a little bit of crossover, which I'm going to describe in a second, but ultimately there are two different conditions that need their own attention, but hopefully if we treat one, the other one will get better and vice versa, and it would be nice to think that we can treat both at the same time so that you can get rid of two things at once. And certainly that's what I do with my patients if they have cording and lymphedema going on at the same time. Interestingly, if you treat cording, you are going to start getting the arm moving more pain-free with more full range of motion. And that's going to help your lymphatic flow, which hopefully is going to help your ability to move the arm, drain the arm, and also do things like perform self-lymphatic drainage or have manual lymphatic drainage performed on you. So if you're trying to flush excess fluid out of the arm, but your cording is so sensitive that no one can touch that area, it's going to be difficult to perform manual lymphatic drainage. So just keep in mind that it is absolutely worth targeting the sensitivity of the cord so that you can start to perform lymphatic drainage massage. Interestingly, the other thing that can help cording is wearing a compression sleeve. Quite a number of times in my clinic, I have put sleeves so compression sleeves on patients with cording to reduce a little bit of their discomfort. It's possible that these patients who have put sleeves on to reduce the impact of cording have also had a little bit of lymphedema starting in their arm at the same time. So compression sleeves seem to reduce some discomfort with cording. I don't think this is going to work for every person out there, but if your cording is causing quite a bit of pain, then it might be worth considering putting a compression garment on because this might reduce your pain with the cording, which will allow you then to go on and move the arm more effectively. Any extra movement you can do with the limb is going to take some tension off the nerve. And then if you can move more easily, then you can start to perform your neural stretching, which ultimately is the thing that's going to be getting rid of your cording. As I mentioned before, lymphedema can be reduced in part with manual lymphatic drainage. So if you are performing manual lymphatic drainage, then you may as well also perform some massage on the cording. I have done other videos on massage for cording before, but essentially it doesn't need to be anything to rocket sciencey. As long as you can find that cord and apply some firm pressure and work the cord in a direction towards the armpit, just in keeping with lymphatic flow. So if you can desensitize the sensitive cord, that's going to allow more movement through the cord and more ability to touch that cord, to massage that cord, and therefore the ability to perform manual lymphatic drainage gets easier. So anything you can do to get the arm moving and to get the arm in compression or the arm having manual lymphatic drainage performed on it. This is all going to help lymphedema as well as cording at the same time, because like I said at the start of this video, they almost seem to feed off each other. So if you can treat one, it's gonna make the other thing easier and vice versa. So the take home message guys is that if you've got mild to moderate lymphedema starting and you've got some really sensitive type cording going on at the same time, Try to treat both at once with compression sleeves, massage, manual lymphatic drainage and neural stretching. See if you can get yourself down to a physiotherapist, physical therapist or occupational therapist or nurse who's got enough experience with breast cancer and particularly lymphedema so that they can really help you move forward with both of these issues at the same time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've gained some really good information. I'm Jane McKenzie, the Breast Cancer Physio, and I'll see you next time.